Intro. What's actually above and below our solar system? Ever wondered if astronomers have been deliberately hiding the truth about our solar system from you? Why do textbooks keep showing that suspiciously perfect, flat diagram when the reality above and below our cosmic neighborhood tells a completely different story? For decades, we've been fed the same simplistic model of our solar system, eight neat planets circling the sun on what looks like a cosmic vinyl record. But this tidy illustration isn't just misleading. It's a fundamental distortion that obscures the true nature of our cosmic neighborhood. Be sure to keep watching until the end of this video because I'm going to reveal shocking evidence about massive structures looming thousands of times larger than our entire planetary system that conventional astronomy textbooks conveniently ignore. So don't click away. You won't want to miss these censored cosmic realities that completely transform our understanding of what's up and down from Earth. Let's start with what the establishment does get right. How did our solar system form? Our solar system did indeed form from a swirling primordial cloud of gas and dust. As this material collapsed under gravity, conservation of angular momentum forced most of it into a spinning disk. This created what astronomers call the ecliptic plane, essentially the flat region where most planets orbit. But here's where the deception begins. This alignment is nowhere near as perfect as most illustrations suggest. Mercury's orbit tilts at approximately 7 degrees from the supposed perfect plane. Pluto, controversially demoted from planetary status, deviates by a whopping 17 degrees. These aren't minor details. They are significant deviations that standard models conveniently minimize or ignore entirely. Even more damning to the flat disk narrative are comets, ancient messengers from the outer solar system that routinely arrive from directions that should be impossible according to simplified models. Many comets follow orbits that are nearly perpendicular to the ecliptic, diving down into the inner solar system for what orthodox astronomy considers as above, then exiting in entirely different directions. How can this happen in a supposedly flat system? The truth is that mainstream science has conditioned us to think about space using Earth-based concepts that simply don't apply beyond our atmosphere. On Earth, up and down have clear meanings because gravity provides a universal reference point. But in the vacuum of space, these directions become entirely relative. When astronomers talk about what's above or below our solar system, they are using the ecliptic plane as an arbitrary reference point, a fact rarely emphasized in educational materials. This conceptual sleight of hand allows conventional astronomy to maintain the illusion of a tidy, orderly system when the reality is far messier and more chaotic. By establishing the ecliptic as a default reference frame, anything that doesn't conform to this flat model can be marginalized as an exception rather than recognized as evidence challenging the fundamental model itself. The implications are profound. If we've been misled about something as basic as the shape of our own solar system, what other cosmic truths might be oversimplified to the point of deception? The traditional model fails to account for the vast majority of our solar system's actual structure, focusing narrowly on the planetary orbits while ignoring the much larger, three-dimensional reality that extends far above and below this arbitrary plane. Think about it. If most of what exists in our solar system doesn't conform to this flat model, why do we keep perpetuating this limited view? Perhaps because acknowledging the true complexity would force a complete rewriting of conventional astronomy textbooks and a fundamental shift in how we visualize our place in the cosmos. If the reality of our solar system's orbital plane shocked you, what's lurking above and below that plane will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about our cosmic neighborhood. The scientific establishment has conveniently focused your attention on the tiny sliver of our solar system where planets reside, while remaining suspiciously quiet about the vast spherical structures that make up most of our solar system's actual volume. Let's start with the Oort Cloud, a massive spherical shell that completely surrounds our solar system in all directions. This isn't some minor feature. It extends between 50,000 to 100,000 astronomical units from the Sun in every direction. For perspective, that's nearly two light years, almost halfway to the nearest star. Yet somehow, this structure that dwarfs the planetary system by orders of magnitude barely gets mentioned in conventional astronomy education. Why is something so fundamentally important to understanding our cosmic neighborhood so consistently downplayed? The evidence of this enormous spherical cloud is hiding in plain sight. Long-period comets regularly arrive from all directions, not just along the ecliptic plane. These ancient messengers orbit the sun at every conceivable angle, some completely perpendicular to the planetary disk. 
Each one is living proof that our solar system extends far above and below the simplified diagram shown in textbooks. The Oort cloud contains trillions of icy bodies, far more object than in the inner solar system, yet remains curiously absent from most educational materials. Even more troubling is how little attention is paid to the heliosphere, our solar system protective bubble created by the constant outflow of charged particles from the sun. This isn't some abstract concept. NASA's Voyager spacecraft physically crosses boundary, providing direct evidence of its existence. Yet how many people have even heard of it? The heliosphere extends far beyond the planets, creating a teardrop-shaped barrier that shields us from harmful galactic radiation. Without this three-dimensional shield, life as we know it might not exist on Earth. Doesn't that seem like something worth discussing? The heliopause, where our solar system's influence ends and interstellar space begins, isn't a perfect sphere, but a constantly shifting boundary responding to both solar activity and our movement through the galaxy. This dynamic interaction creates a complex structure that bears no resemblance whatsoever to the neat, orderly system depicted in conventional models. The heliosphere shape is distorted because our entire solar system is hurtling through the galaxy at approximately 200 kilometers per second, another crucial fact rarely emphasized in traditional astronomy education. If the majority of our solar system's volume consists of these spherical structures extending far above and below the planetary plane, then our conventional understanding is not just incomplete, it's fundamentally misleading. The flat disk represents only a tiny fraction of our cosmic neighborhood, while the vast majority extends in three dimensions all around us. This isn't just an academic distinction. It completely transforms how we should understand our place in the cosmos and raises serious questions about what else might be present in these vast, largely unexplored regions. Zooming out even further exposes perhaps the most shocking revelation of all. Our entire solar system is careening through space at breakneck speeds, constantly interacting with different galactic environments that mainstream astronomy conveniently glosses over. While they kept you focused on planets and moons, they've neglected to mention we're hurtling through the cosmos at over 200 kilometers per second, encountering cosmic structures that make our planetary system look microscopic by comparison. Right now, our solar system is traveling through what astronomers call the local interstellar cloud, a region of slightly higher density gas and dust spanning roughly 30 light years across. Yet despite currently hosting our entire solar system, how many science documentaries have ever mentioned it? This interstellar environment directly interacts with our heliosphere, compressing it from certain directions and extending it in others, creating asymmetries that no simplified model could ever properly represent. The establishment's silence on these interactions is deafening. Even more troubling is what lies beyond. The local bubble, an enormous, nearly empty void spanning approximately 300 light years across. Conventional astronomy tells us this massive cavity was carved out by ancient supernova explosions that violently cleared the region of matter. Consider the implications. Our entire solar system floats within what amounts to a cosmic blast zone, surrounded by walls of denser material at its edges. The density of matter in this region is ten times lower than the galactic average, creating conditions that fundamentally alter how our solar system interacts with its surroundings. Why isn't this front-page astronomical news? These structures aren't static features on a cosmic map. As our solar system completes its 225 to 250 million year orbit around the galactic center, we continue to encounter dramatically different galactic environments. This journey carries us through varying densities of interstellar matter, different radiation environments, and proximity to star-forming regions that conventional models rarely integrate into their simplified solar system representations. This dynamic movement, not the static model shown in textbooks, is our true cosmic reality. Perhaps most revealing is how mainstream astronomy discusses the Milky Way itself. Our galaxy isn't a perfect flat disk either, but rather a complex three-dimensional structure with a central bulge, spiral arms, and a warped disk. Beyond this lies a galactic halo, a vast spherical region extending far above and below the galactic plane. This means the very galaxy we call home exhibits the same three-dimensional complexity that's deliberately downplayed when discussing our solar system. The pattern of simplification persists at every scale. This conspiracy of oversimplification has profound implications. By flattening our understanding of cosmic structures, established astronomy has effectively blinded us to the true nature of our place in the universe. We don't live on a planet in a flat disk. 
We exist within a nested series of three-dimensional structures, each influencing the others in complex ways that traditional models completely fail to capture. The real question is why this perspective remains so consistently suppressed. Is it simply because three-dimensional reality is harder to illustrate in textbooks, or is there something about understanding our true cosmic context that challenges more fundamental assumptions about our place in the universe? If you found this exploration of our cosmic neighborhood eye-opening, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content that challenges established scientific narratives. What other astronomical facts do you think might be oversimplified or misrepresented? Drop your theories in the comments below. Check out our next video on the end screens or our solar system playlist.